today, AMD's working on one monster gaming APU. But before I get to that, bad news on Nvidia's upcoming consumer CPUs, and AMD's releasing a ton of new products, and we have pricing plus performance. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay. It's news time, and first up for today, I have some bad news when it comes to NVIDIA's upcoming desktop and notebook gaming CPUs. Remember, those are set to be called their N1 and N1X processors. Well, it looks like they have since been delayed, which likely explains why they weren't at Computex like leaks suggested. As you can see right down here, it says, when we first heard about NVIDIA's intention to enter the market as CPUs for Windows-based consumer PC back in 2023, rumor had it they'd be releasing them in 2025. However, when the company introduced its GB10 system on a chip for compact AI workstations, co-designed with MediaTek in March, it never mentioned anything for consumer PCs. Neither NVIDIA nor MediaTek discussed their codenamed N1 and N1X processors at Computex in May, a clear indication that their launch was not on the horizon. Well, apparently this is because NVIDIA expect to release these chips later in 2026 due to a hardware issue that needed to be fixed. But NVIDIA managed to fix the problem without a respin, which apparently brought that right back to early 2026. Unfortunately, we have yet another problem here because you can see just days ago, another technical problem surfaced, again complicating the schedule according to Semi-Accurate. says the previously re-established early 2026 target was now in jeopardy. Apparently, the N1 and N1X have, quote, critical hardware defects, which require a respin. So unlike the first defects that they found, this time they actually require a full new silicon revision. And that takes months. So because of that, we are now apparently looking at late 2026. Now, I will say an interesting part about this is that if the leaks are correct, the N1 and N1X are in fact based on NVIDIA's GB10, yet like they stated, that chip is actually releasing and in fact, from what we've heard, it's set to start releasing July 22nd. So it's fairly interesting that they would be releasing this when they're having problems with other chips based on this same chip. Now, obviously, if they had that same problem with this, they would have delayed that as well. But still, it's sort of interesting to see. Either way, this ultimately means that NVIDIA's upcoming consumer chips aren't coming anytime soon. And next up for today, we have tons of releases coming from AMD. Now, before I get into it, I've already been using these awesome new chargers with built-in retractable cables. And let me tell you, they're a game changer. And while this video is sponsored by Ugreen, I seriously can't say enough good stuff. So this one is their Nexode 45 watt retractable charger. And like the name suggests, it comes with a retractable USB-C cable, meaning instead of carrying a separate charger and cable, it's all in one. Just toss it in your backpack and you're good to go. I already used it on the last trip I took and it's great not having to ask where the cable is. I've played that game way too many times. Not to mention the fact that it's extremely compact with a foldable plug for travel like this. It also delivers up to 45 watts of power, and it does it with two USB-C ports and one USB-A port, so you can charge three devices at once. It's also equipped with GAN Infinity Tech for all-around safety protection. Plus, it supports multiple fast charging protocols so you can easily charge laptops, tablets, and more. Basically, you've got to pick one up by visiting the Best Buy my link in the description below. Now, back to the story, I'll first start with the actual release date of both AMD's Threadripper 9000 Pro lineup as well as their R9700 GPU. For those who don't remember the R9700, it's essentially a 9070 XT, but with Pro features, of course, and then a whopping 32 gigabytes of GDDR6. And while it definitely won't be worth the added cost of being a Pro product to game on, I'm definitely interested to see how well it does in games with so much memory. Now, when it comes to the release, 
Both the Threadripper Pro lineup and the R9700 are set to come July 23rd. And with that, we now have pricing for AMD's upcoming Threadripper Pro lineup. And as you can see, the highest end model comes in at a whopping $11,699. Oh! Oh! <laughs> That's what got me. Now, it does go all the way down to $1,649, but still 11 over 11 grand is pretty wild. With that said, so I hate to kind of bring this up again, but a lot of people seem to really be harping on that price, which I fully understand, but some people are comparing it to say AMD's first gen Threadripper lineup, but this is nothing like that. AMD essentially brought over their highest end Epic server line to Threadripper a couple generations back. And as an example, last gen 7995WX was 10 grand. Now, this one is quite a bit more expensive, but once again, don't forget that Intel's first gen Platinum Xeon, this was a part of their scalable processors, cost a whopping $10,009, and that was all the way back in 2017, which means that doesn't include all the inflation that's happened since then, so this really isn't nearly as bad as people are saying. Though, if Intel doesn't begin to compete again soon, AMD will absolutely raise those prices, which is why competition is so important. When Intel did all those years ago, back when AMD really wasn't able to compete, this is something that is very much something any and every company would do as well. If you have no competition, why in the world would you spend millions of dollars to make your product significantly better? Just have very tiny iterative updates every generation. But then AMD came along, so Intel ran around with their hair on fire, deciding, okay, we've really got to do something, and then they tried their best to compete. Now, ultimately, especially in the very high end, they have absolutely lost, at least up until now, but... The simple fact is any company would do this. With all of that said, we also now have the first benchmark that has been leaked with the 9995WX. And you can see here that it scored a whopping 178,000 points in Cinebench R23. And that is a whopping 46% higher performance versus the last gen 7995WX. Now, we don't really know if this is overclocked or anything like that. It likely is, so that probably explains why it's such a massive increase. But still, this is very much impressive. And finally, yet another release from AMD, they just announced their Ryzen AI 5 330. This is yet again a Kraken Point APU, and this is fairly interesting. So as the name suggests, it is a very low-end mobile APU. We are talking a four-core processor, one full Zen 5 core with three Zen 5C cores. It also only comes with a two CU integrated graphics, so it's not gonna be gaming or anything like that. But interestingly enough, even though this is such a low-end part, it still comes with the full XDNA2 processor with 50 tops. I'm not sure if this is just trying to be an entry-level AI APU or what, but regardless, they now have this. And lastly for today, AMD is apparently set to release an absolute monster APU. As you can see, this story was originally leaked by Moore's Law is Dead, who claims that AMD is working on an upcoming APU codenamed Magnus. And what's wild about this is that it's clearly meant for gaming. I mean, look at this massive GPU die. Plus, it doesn't have any low power Zen 6 cores. Remember that leaks claim that AMD is planning a new core type with Zen 6, yet this only has the main Zen 6 core as well as Zen 6C cores. Either way, another wild thing is that it comes with 11 cores, not 16, not even 12. And given the size of the iGPU die, if this was made for anything but gaming, they'd likely have at least 16 cores. Not only that, but Moore's Law is Dead is thinking that this is likely a custom variant made to go in the PS6. And given all the stuff we've heard about Sony and AMD lately, plus how the PS5 chip looks, this definitely seems to be the case. Either way, this is seriously looking like one epic APU. 
So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's next-gen monster APU that this is, or are you more excited about some of their other releases? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out that new Ugreen charger down in the description below. And as always, have a great day.